One of the reasons why I'm building this site going back to begin with is this plastic water tank, which I think will be perfect for two key parts of the build. And I also have this shop vac that's actually 30 years old. And I'm going to use the top part of that, that includes the motor, and also the top of the collection bucket, which I'll cut off. I took it apart to put a new cord on, but I also wanted to check the brushes to make sure that if I use this, it's not going to die on me in a couple weeks. The original filter on this was much bigger, but then it didn't have any separator, so a smaller one should work. Here I'm testing it to see how well the air flows through it, and this looks pretty good. There's no change in sound when I take the top off, which would increase the airflow. I also need to plug the original inlet, and conveniently they have this plug on the side that used to be there for draining water out if you're sucking up water, and I'll just glue that in the hole. There are two very important parts that I need to make from plywood, and those are the theme baffle and what I'm calling the top deck. And that top deck is what I'll work on first. I'm using a very simple circle jig and my trim router to cut a recess around. And that's for that top ring that I cut off the old collection bucket to fit into. I need to glue that in place so that it will interface the old shop vac with all of this new stuff. This larger diameter recess that I'm cutting that's wider is for the cyclone ring that will have the new inlet. That's the same size as the new collection bucket, so I'm using that to test the fit. I'm going to jump in here and let you know that my Woodworkers Toolbox class is my next full tutorial on a Maker's Mod. Along with the projects from many of YouTube's top makers, you'll also be able to access this project that will cover everything you need to know to make my toolbox your next woodworking success. For the release of this series and for a limited time, you'll get access for 75% off. That's only $4.95 for your first month. Just click the link in the description below and join myself and other makers like Jimmy DiResta, The Samurai Carpenter, Neil Paskin, Frank Howarth, and John Peters inside the Maker's Mouth. Then I can mark and cut the outer diameter, plus I need a hole in the middle for the filter. I'll cut that with the jigsaw. With that done, I can glue the ring from the old collection bucket in, make sure it makes a good seal and that's not going to come apart. Then I'm going to put the motor in place and put some weight on top to hold everything down flat while the glue dries. In the meantime, I can start working on the theme baffle, but before I change the setting on the circle cutting jig, I want to cut these off cuts so that they have the correct arc that matches the outer diameter of the collection bucket. I'll need these later. The theme baffle has a recess for the collection bucket to fit into and also a wide slot that goes around the outside for the dust to fall through. And I'm using the circle jig again to cut that recess and to cut shallow grooves where the slot will be. And then I'll drill out the ends of each slot, there are four, with a one and a quarter inch Forstner bed, and then I'll finish the cuts with the jigsaw. That shallow groove that I cut will guide a flush trim bit to clean up the sides of the slots. And I'm not sure if this is actually helpful, but it can't hurt. I'm going to use a hole saw to bevel the front and back edge of each slot with the idea that it may improve airflow. The glue dried on that ring, so I figured it was a good time to check to see how well the collection bucket seals inside that recess that I cut. And even though the top of this bucket is still pretty rough, it's sealing up pretty good. Next, I'm going to cut what I'm calling the cyclone ring from the rest of the old tank. I'm going to do that on a table saw and then flip it around and clean up the original cut that I did freehand.
Then I can use silicone to glue that ring in place to the top deck and use silicone again to glue the theme baffle to it as well. Like I said, the top edge of the collection bucket is a little bit rough from freehand cutting it. So I'm gonna flatten that with a simple jig I made with my trim router that's clapped in the shoulder vise on my workbench. And then I'll switch out the bit to a chaffering bit and run that around the rim as well. Now I can use those offcuts that I made earlier with the correct arc that matches the outside of the bucket. These form a partial ring on the bottom of the theme baffle to guide the bucket as it's being slid in place so that it will go right up inside that recess. The new collection bucket has a hole in the bottom that I need to plug, so I'll make that with plywood and hold it in place with silicone and a couple of screws with washers. Now I can get the frame put together with more scrap and recycled plywood and make the simple mechanism that lifts the bucket so that it will seal to the underside of the theme baffle. That's this piece of plywood that has a handle that also has wedges that will rotate and lift the bucket up just enough to make it seal. This pivots on a 3 8 inch bolt that I'm gonna lock in place with more construction adhesive. And this doesn't get screwed all the way down. I'm leaving some space for the lift mechanism to drop down so that the bucket can be slid out. Kind of hard to grip this bucket so it needs a handle. Just made a simple one here and just screwed it on the side. Then I can make the inlet from more scrap and recycled plywood and drill the hole through and then I'll hold that inlet in place and use it as a drilling guide to cut the hole in the cyclone ring. Then I can get the inlet glued in place and let that dry before running some tests. I got a mix of very fine and some coarse dust here to suck up. And if you look closely, you can actually see the dust swirling around in the cyclone ring and also in the collection bucket. So it seems to be working well. These rollerblade wheels will certainly make it easy to move this shop back around. And that's a blessing, but sometimes it's also a curse, as we'll see very soon. I can see that there's some dust on the filter, but not a lot. Of course, none of these cyclone separators are 100% efficient, so some dust will get through.
with everything done and nothing undone when it fell on the floor, I can give it a coat of paint. I decided that I would make it red, mainly because I had that color paint. And also I'm not gonna trip over it in the shop because I can't see it. In this build series, I'm gonna cover how I made what I'm calling my woodworker's toolbox. This is all solid wood, except for a few plywood parts where it makes sense. And I'm gonna start off with the dimensions. It's 30 inches long from side to side. From front to back,